we'll now combine what we've learnt about nesting families and shared families to implement one of the most complex topics within Revit families. Here I have a simple laboratory desk where the length is controlled by an instance parameter. Therefore, when I load it into the laboratory project that I have open, and when I place an instance, because the length is an instance parameter, I can simply drag the bench to the desired length. This allows me to easily snap to geometry such as walls and other references. Alternatively, I could of course select the length parameter and type in the value. I now want to be able to include some laboratory stools into this family and I want the number of stools to adjust along with the length of the bench. Therefore, I'll go to Edit Family. I'll go into Plan. I'll first go to Insert, Load Family, and from my library, I will select a lab stool, select open, and now I'll just go and place an instance just in the model space here. I'll first set out the starter offset for the stool by creating a reference plane giving it a name and then placing a dimension. I'll actually change the uh, witness line so I will select the dimension, select edit witness line and then select the outer. I'll create a parameter called stool offset. I'll then use the align tool to align the stool. I'll also create another reference plane. and an another parameter for stool setback. And then again, line and lock. So I now want to add a certain number of stools that varies based on the length of the bench. And to do that, I will create a parametric array. So firstly, I set the, or select the stool. And then, I then select the array tool. And I can, on the options bar, I can set either a linear array, a radial array. I can choose whether to group and associate so that the elements selected will be grouped and therefore adjust when the group is edited. I can set the number and I can either select the next instance to be the second or the last element to be placed. So I will select last and I will select the stool and I will move the second instance towards the end of the stool and I can then type in for example three and it places three instances 
of the grouped stool. I can set this to four and it will fill in the gap. And because this instance was the last, whenever I select or change the array, it will always fill in between the first and the last instance. If I just undo and I select the stool again, select the array tool and select second. This will place the second instance when I type four. It will add two more onto the end and it will keep going to the desired number. So I'll keep with this second option for now. I can select an instance of the stool group and if I select move, it adjusts the spacing between each of the arrayed elements. Therefore, I'm going to copy this reference plane rename it and then place a dimension and then create a parameter called stool centers. So I'll create this to be 600 and then I will align and lock the next group instance along to the reference plane. This therefore means I can adjust the spacing between each of the stools as required. I now want to be able to adjust the number in the array using the family types and I would like a formula inside the family types. Therefore, if I select on a group in the array and then select the array element on the options bar in the label dropdown, I can then create a new parameter. I'll then create a parameter called number of stools and it must be instance because the length is an instance parameter also. Group it under, say, segment and fittings. Select OK. So now if I go to the family types, I can adjust the number of stools. And it will add an extra stool in here. Now that I have added the functionality to create multiple stools, I now need to make sure that when the length adjusts, the number of stools adjusts with it. Therefore, I need to make a connection between the length and the number of stools, and I do that using formula. I'll go to my family types. And in the formula for the number of stools, I can simply say that the number of stools equals the length minus the stool offset, or rather the stool offset. And I'll put this in brackets so that it calculates this first. divided by the stool centers. So it's calculating the length between here and the end and dividing it by the stool centers. If I wanted to, I could include the stool offset at the end. So this formula would then read 
2 times the stool offset, and again I can put that in brackets just to make sure that that is calculated first. Select the next parameter or press tab, and I can see that the formula is now being driven by the number, the length, and the stool offset and stool centers. So I click apply and click OK. If I now adjust the length of the stool or the bench, I see that I get an additional number of stools that is calculated via this formula here. Now, when I load this family into the project and overwrite, I can see that as I drag this bench, the number of stools increases. There may be some adjustments to the formula that I need to do in order to make sure that appropriate numbers of stools get filled in. I could, for example, remove the two times stool offset, or I could even remove the stool offset altogether. But again, I don't want to make sure that it overlaps. So I'll put the stool offset Need to set this to minus. Click OK. And if I load back into project, I have a updated family. Again, I can create a copy. And for each instance, I get a different number of stools, depending on the length of each individual instance. There is one thing to note about parametric arrays, is that if I were to shrink the desk to a size, I get a warning saying can't make furniture bench laboratory, the type bench, and this is because if I go back to the family, if I set the length to be a value where the number of stools or the array value equals 1, I get a warning saying that the parameter number of stools, so the array parameter, has an invalid value. This is because a parametric array must have a minimum of two array instances. Otherwise, the family will break. Therefore, the workaround this in order to get an instance of one is to create a formula for the number of stools saying if, brackets, the calculation is less than 2, then the fixed value should be 2. If not, then it should be the calculation. So if I now reduce this length to, say, 1200, even though it should be number 1, because the length minus stool offset divided by stool centers is less than 2, it is being set to a value of 2. When, it, when the value is above, it is then taking the formula as so. So that's great, but how do we then add in a case where we have a single instance? Firstly, I'm going to place another instance of the furniture or lab stool. 
and I will align it to the vertical reference plane. So I want this stool to be visible when the calculation should read 1 for the parametric array. Therefore, I'm going to create a visible or yes-no parameter called single array. Again, set to instance, and I'll group it under the visibility parameter. And I'm now going to edit the group of the array, select the stool inside the group, and create another parameter called multiple array. Again, it must be an instance parameter. I'll then finish the group, and because it is in the group, if I then tab to select on, or I select the group and press edit, because it is the same group, this stool is also associated to the multiple array parameter. I can now go to the family types, and in the single array, I can put in the formula or the condition where it wants to be visible if the length minus the stool offset divided by the stool centers is less than 2. And then I'll select not single array in the multiple array parameter so that is always the opposite of what the single array is. So if I click OK and I'll now load this into the project and overwrite. If I now drag this smaller than a calculation of two stools, the array is hidden and the single stool is shown. And now, no matter how small I make this, the family does not break and will always show the single stool. So now what I can simply do is I can align the stools on top of each other. I get a warning saying there are multiple instances in the same place, but I know that they'll never be always visible at the same time. It'll always be one, i.e. the single array or the multiple array that are visible at any one time. So I'll load back into project and I can see now how the bench is fixed and I don't get any warnings when I make it smaller. So that is how to create parametric arrays through nesting families and then associating the relevant formula that we've been through in previous videos.